Hi, I'm Sonny. And I'm Ellie. We are about to take you into the Victorian jewel of the Smithsonian Institution. It looks like it could be in downtown Paris. It's actually a neighbor to the White House. This jewel, the Renwick Gallery, is a branch of the Smithsonian American Art Museum that features American decorative arts and crafts. We'll show you highlights of the permanent collection. But before we go inside, remember to leave all your belongings on the bus. There's a ton of history here. The Renwick Gallery was completed in 1861 as the city's first art museum. And during the Civil War, the Union soldiers stored their uniforms here. And I can't believe they almost tore this beautiful building down. <sighs> Luckily, in the 1960s, First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy started the fight to save this building. And soon it was dedicated to the collection, study, and exhibition of American crafts and decorative arts. Without the efforts of Mrs. Kennedy and others, the Grand Salon might not be here to showcase all of these 19th century paintings. This painting of Yellowstone Canyon by Thomas Moran was key to creating Yellowstone as our first national park in 1872. And when these pictures came back to Washington and the administration here saw the grandeur of what was in the middle of our country, they decided that those lands needed to be preserved. It's a pretty phenomenal occurrence when art influences the preservation of land. There are stories behind each of the artworks here at the Renwood Gallery. And sometimes things are not what they seem. Ghost Clock by Wendell Castle looks like a grandfather clock partially covered with a sheet. So, can you tell us what it actually is? You can find out when you actually visit. Craft artists work in metal, clay, fiber, wood, and glass, and much, much more. Glass artist Beth Lipman worked with 15 other glass artists to create this feast called Banketcha. Each artist had just two attempts to make their glass vessel. One of whatever they made was put in the final piece. Do you notice the glass lobster that seems to have fallen off the table? Actually, the lobster fell off the table the very first time the piece was being installed. Beth Lippman right away said, leave it the way it is. All of the artworks here at the Renwick are one of a kind, unique, never to be made again. And all the artwork belongs to every American. So use your eyes and your mind, not your hands, to check out all of the artwork here. It kind of looks like rounded out glass, like sea glass you find like on the Like beach. sea glass, something that where the environment... Clay is sort of bent. You don't get clay exactly in right. circle. And glass, you get perfect. And game fish, it's full of toys and it's different games you can play. This is another artwork about a feast. For this piece of silver objects, the artist Richard Mosley used drills, sandpaper, and pliers to craft this bracelet. Can you believe that that bottle is less than one inch tall? It is amazing that the artist could make such an intricate and small design as feast bracelet. All of the artwork at the Renwick Gallery are more than just technical challenges. Each one is very personal to the artist who made it. This is much more than just a beautiful piece of furniture. There's a game of snakes and ladders. There are curved drawers and hidden drawers. When this Bureau of Bureaucracy by Kim Schmaman is open, it tells the story of the artist's life. Schmaman included documents from his life. In one of the 20 document drawers is the artist's birth certificate. There are also papers that he, a white South African, had to have during apartheid. There's not only storytelling here, but incredible skill and patience from the artist. This Bureau of Bureaucracy took Kim Schmaman five years to make. This artwork by Jocelyn Chateauvert may look like an abstract painting. But if you look at it from an angle, you can see it's not painted on a canvas. It's mostly made out of paper. Chateauvert made the paper herself. 
Then she twisted and turned it when it was wet. As it dried, the individual pieces of paper shrank to what we see here. Together, all the individual pieces make up the final product, which is entitled Scratch. That's in the dogwood thing. Are those still the petals in it? Or did you put something else into the petals? No, these are the petals. She opened the petals and impressed the petals down. The Renwick Gallery has a touch cart full of artworks donated by artists specifically for you to handle. You can feel the weight and texture and appreciate the skill and artist's imagination. Only these objects can be touched in the museum. Not all ceramic crafts are small enough to fit in your hands. Standing in at nine feet tall, meet the creation of Viola Fry. The lady in blue and yellow dress was made in parts, weighing up to 50 pounds. Each part of the sculpture was then able to fit inside the kiln. After Fry fired all the pieces, she then put them together and added a steel bar so that the sculpture wouldn't fall. Sometimes it takes years of training to make the artworks we have seen. But to be a master crafts artist, it also helps to be resourceful. Larry Fuente got most of his materials from a second-hand store that was throwing out old toys. Just like a trophy or a fish that you can catch and put up on a wall to show off, the artist wanted this fish to be showy. With the parade of yo-yos, dice, ping pong balls, dominoes. Pez dispensers. This is about as showy as showy gets. Now you know some of the highlights of the small and spectacular Renwick Gallery. Located just across the street from the White House.